RPV TV presents Studio RPV, the Peninsula's local news show with co-hosts Maria Soreo and Liz Brown Swanson. Hi everyone, welcome to Studio RPV. I'm Liz Brown Swanson. I'm Maria Soreo. Here we are, Liz, in studio, but a lot going on right outside of our studio, including those whales out there for whale yes, of the day this coming is up. Peak whale so watch season. I love here. it. I saw so many whales the other day when I was out there. Did you? It was awesome. A lot of fluking tails. Never seemed to catch the breach, but this is the time to get out and check it out. I think I've seen that maybe once or twice, and I think last year at Whale of a Day, we did actually see a couple of breaches, which was so exciting. And then right. they ring the bell, and it's so much fun. So in the show, we're going to give you a sneak yeah. preview of Whale Can't of the Day, April 13th. Right. We're going to go down there and check mm -hmm. it out. And also a sneak preview of the new exhibit that will be at PVIC That's by the right. time Whale of a Day hits, and that is of the Fresnel lens that they just put over there from the Point Vicente Lighthouse. The place is so historical, so much information, and I love going over there and just looking around and shopping. Something for everyone, really, at PVIC. So we've got some fun stories and yep. also some exciting people to meet. We have the executive director of the PV Peninsula Land Conservancy. She's mm -hmm. going to join us here in studio. And David Benoit. David Benoit, who's the Who you went out and hung out with. Yeah, yeah, he was playing uh, at the Peninsula uh, Library at, yep. uh, at the uh, lecture series there, so we're going to travel over to check him Lots out. Lots going on. A lot of cool stuff. And the big exciting news that we're going to start by sharing is there is a new fish market. Yes. I know you want to say, is this a fish story? I was just going to say, is this a fish tail? <laughs> But, you <laughs> no. know, because since we started with whale of a day. Yes. Golden Cove now has a brand new fish market. It's the Great yeah. American International Seafood Market, which um, was uh, has been opened and started and founded by a family, the Galetti family, that mm -hmm. are based out of San Pedro, four generations. And um, people are so excited to have this, this new market. It's, it's great. It's a beautiful market yeah. in Golden Cove. And um, How much did you buy fish? when you were? I love fish. Yeah. But how much did you get when you were over there? Because, you know. Of Liz can't do a shopping story and not buy stuff. Well, so. of course, I did buy. It's not <laughs> I just because I'm Greek bronze, you know? Okay. Amazing fish imported from Greece. So they Love have it. it all. They have local fish, imported fish, you name it. Mm. And you being Italian, the fresher the better. Incredible pastas, sauces, you Ooh, name it. I'll have to go check um, it out. And the thing is, the uh, one of the co-owners and also the manager who we're going to meet with in a, in a minute, um, he worked with um, Whole Foods, gave them a pitch for some decades, um, managing their seafood, et cetera. So he really knows his stuff. And Excellent. let's check out this store. It is absolutely beautiful in Golden Cove. Hi, I'm Tim Opperly. Welcome to the Great American International Seafood Market. Uh, the community here has just been tremendous, and we just want to thank you for allowing us to open up in the community. We have a great selection of fish. We've got fresh fish, frozen fish, um, ready to eat fish, ready to cook fish, marinated, seasoned, all types of, of seafood items for you to enjoy. The market is about 3,500 square feet and it's a unique seafood market. We offer all sorts of uh, wonderful items imported from around the world, uh, from canned sardines, anchovies, mackerel fillets. We make a lot of things in house as well. We have fresh poke, octopus salad, uh, crab dips, uh, crab and artichoke with spinach feta. Uh, we have full lines of salsa and spices from around the world. And of course you have fish sourced locally right here. Yes, we do. We have our own facility right in Carson, California. It's a 165,000 square foot facility and uh, we get our fish delivered uh, six days a week. You own this, Tim, with uh, you're partnered with um, the local Galetti family. Talk about the generations behind this. So there are many generations behind this, and uh, Salvatore Galetti is Buddy Galetti's father, and we have a picture of him here on the wall um, back in the late 50s, uh, working on the docks down here in San Pedro, and it's been a pleasure working with this family. They are just tremendous to work with. I love it. It's big. It has everything fresh. I love the other stores close by, but you can't beat the fresh, the fresh seafood. So what else have you picked up when you've come in? Uh, the tartar sauce, which is really good, and the seasonings, especially the salmon seasoning, it really makes everything tasty. We have a, a line of sauces that you can only get here. We, uh, I found them in Atlanta, and we're the first uh, grocery store to have them here on the West Coast. And then we have everything from a sweet bourbon sauce a cherry balsamic glaze, a horseradish dipping sauce. They even do a Caesar uh, seafood marinade that goes fantastic on swordfish and mahi-mahi. We're, real, we're really excited to have it here. And it's nice and convenient, close to Trader Joe's. And You picked up a few pieces of fish. What did you pick up today? <laughs> yeah, swordfish, which is my all-time favorite. We're open Monday through Saturday, 9 to 7 p.m., Sundays 9 to 6. And if you, if you don't see something in the case, ask us. You know, most likely we can get it. 
If not, we'll, we'll keep sourcing until we can. Liz, that was amazing. I can't wait to go over there and you're, get dinner. I know. You're a sushi girl, too. So I love sushi. Sushi is amazing. Mm -hmm. And it, my husband, who loves sardines, there's a can for oh, every well. day of the week. <laughs> really? Yeah. <laughs> every day of the year. And um, Do you eat those as well? Uh, I do not eat sardines. I'll do anchovies, but not the sardines. Oh, wow. Okay. But, you know, it's excited, I think, Maria's people were to see the new fish market. Mm -hmm. We were sad to find out that in Golden Cove, we're going to lose another business. The Admiral Risti is actually closing, and uh, this is a story that came out a couple of weeks ago, but I had a chance to go over and actually talk to Wayne Judah about the story, about what's going on, and the fact that he really wants the community to embrace the fact that they've got a little under six months left and then they're going to be out. So let's go and talk to Wayne and hear the whole story from him. The restaurant's closing. Everybody wants to know why, so tell us the story of why it's closing. Well, our lease is up uh, at the end of August, and, and I'm at an age where I need to retire, so. I made that decision. I think it's difficult for people, as we talked about, because the restaurant has been here for so long. Um, what kind of things have people said to you? Uh, a lot of people have approached me with different memories and, you know, two and three generations of families that have been coming here. And they celebrate their anniversaries every year, their birthdays every year. Uh, some of them's wedding receptions are here and they come every year. So it's been a lot of time to develop all these different traditions that people have and uh, they're not happy about me closing right now so uh, I'm trying to just have a I, I'm saying well let's just have a good time for the next six months and uh, and then we'll have a good finishing party so that's what we're trying to accomplish so tell us about reservations I'm sure you're already getting booked up uh, yeah the last few nights are already booked up and uh, we're been very busy for the last couple of weeks and I I keep thinking it's going to settle out but it it's been really busy every night. Kathy you've been involved with Admiral Risty for many years tell me from your perspective what this has been like over the last couple of weeks. Wow when the news was out it hit social media it was on fire we were in three newspapers front page um, the reaction from people Wayne is getting a lot of love from the community and they want to do anything they can to save it and oh my gosh these traditions and memories are so precious to them but you know what August 17th is coming and that will be it but from my perspective I just want everybody to come and have a great time make more happy memories eat your favorite entrees drink your favorite libations just have a great time like I think we've had right Oh yeah, let's just continue on with the party. We just want to do a good job for them and uh, we'll have a good time. This was our special occasion restaurant. All anniversaries, or most of them, if we were in town, we'd be here. Special occasions, birthdays, we were coming here. And uh, so it's going to be a loss. So we're going to have to travel a little bit to find the ambiance that we like, you know, being close to the ocean and uh, just the atmosphere of this place and the great food. Judy, what do you think um, you're going to miss most? I'm going to miss coming around the bend. I always think of that. I come around the bend when I'm driving this direction. I don't live in that direction, but at night if I come around here, seeing the ambiance of the lights, it's a landmark. Everybody's going to miss this place. So. I think people forget that people are allowed to retire, though, yes? Well, I think that's true, too, because I'm retiring as well. So I always told Wayne, when you're finished, I'm finished. Right. So for me, it's like coming full circle. First client will be the last, and I'm good with that. And I think Wayne's good with retiring, too. You, When it's time, you know. Yeah. yeah. What are you most looking forward to in retirement? Just doing nothing, you know. <laughs> Actually, uh, maybe a little travel and... Um, I'm still playing softball, so I'll probably stay with that. And you know, Liz, I had a chance to talk to, to Kathy and Wayne. It was interesting because Kathy has been doing PR here on the Hill for a long time. She's also going to retire, as she said in the piece. And it was interesting because they both told me that the first time they went into the Admiral Risti, they were both on dates, but not with their spouses now. But that right. was their first time 
having a date at the Admiral Risty. A lot of memories made a there lot. over 50 years, right. but in our community. And so, as you know, right. they were saying the very last day that they'll be open in August, they're already booked Yeah, solid. booked up. So, so you got to book your reservation. Book it now. And book often, and you and I need to go out. We need to go out that one more be time before, fun. yeah, one absolutely. last little uh, Chalpino. That's it. That'll be great. Yeah. Love Chalpino. She's just going to focus on dessert. Yeah, I probably will, actually. <laughs> So now our next story, we're going to travel from Golden Cove, just, just Golden Cove, just across the street to the Point Vicente Interpretive Center. That's right. Very busy time of year for the crew at PVIC, Maria. All kinds of things happening. we got whale watch season for right. starters. Yep. So visitors are coming from all over the world, as they should, to check out whales migrating down yes. the coast. And then, of course, besides that, we're getting ready for Whale of the Day, April 13th. Yes, everybody come out. Yeah, we'll be shooting a show from there. So come and say hi, wave at us. So, and, you know, that's that's always so much fun because there's so much to do out there. So getting ready for the April 13th. And the exciting yes. thing at this year's Whale of the Day, what's going to be exhibit. new is there's going to be the ribbon cutting for the new exhibits that hmm. they've been working on at the Interpretive Center. And one of those... Um, is they have the light, the uh, Fresnel lens mm -hmm. from the lighthouse. And the Point, Point Vicente lighthouse was donated by the Coast Guard. That's right. And it's going to be exhibited there. It's phenomenal. It's just spectacular to see. Mm -hmm. So they'll do the ribbon cutting there. And so they're just busy all doing the thing to get us all ready. And so let's join the crew to find out check everything out. that's happening at PVIC. So what will we expect at the 35th Annual Whale of a Day this year in 2019? So we probably have 30 organizations that are all ocean and marine themed, and we have vendors who only have ocean-inspired marine crafts. We have kids' activities. We have free crafts. We have live entertainment all day. We have food trucks. It's just a great day. Of course, celebrating the migration of the gray whale. It's happening right now. We've got census takers here. They've had a busy year. What do you love about spotting whales off this coast? So that's such an exciting thing. If you've never seen it, I mean, this is really one of the most premier whale watch locations like on the entire West Coast. So we're really lucky to have that. So I encourage everyone to come here on Whale of a Day to take part in that. And this really does bring the community together, expecting thousands of people. And it's co-hosted by the city and the organization Los Serenos to Point Vicente. Talk about that partnership and a little bit about that organization. So that is such a perfect partnership because we can provide the logistics and we make the event happen. But they provide all the environmental and the education and all the manpower to kind of make the event work. Plus, all it just not even just us. It's also about the community. We have lots of students and volunteers. So it really is a community event. My name is Elisa Shulman Janiger. I'm the director and coordinator of the ACSLA Gray Well Census and Behavior Project with the American Cetacean Society Los Angeles chapter. So every day from December 1st until the end of May, we have teams of observers here at Point Vicente on the patio looking out over the ocean. And what we're doing is spotting, identifying, and tracking whales and dolphins. This is our 36th consecutive season. So we're the longest running full season census. And it's all staffed, as I said, by uh, citizen scientists. We've got teams of people somewhere between three and eight people per shift that watch throughout the day basically from sunrise to sunset. Whale of a day is a fantastic day to take the family out here. A beautiful area overlooking the water and we've got our census takers here and you could interact and help uh, them count and spot different whales and there's a lot of activities going on. This is your first time whale watching here. Yeah, first time here, I've only whaled watch once in the Boston Harbor area, but this is beautiful. We're hoping they're going to perform for you, Connie. You said you've never even seen a whale, so you're excited. I'm very excited. We just saw that blow, um, so that was really exciting. <laughs> Hi, I'm Marcia Booth. I am the president of Los Serenos, and we're very excited getting ready for our upcoming whale of a day. This year it's going to be held on April 13th from 10 to 4. And back by popular demand is everything we do, which is lots of wonderful food. Uh, we're going to have a beer and wine garden again this year, back by popular demand. We have games. We have arts and crafts. We have a wonderful raffle uh, and auction and just plenty of fun. So we hope that everyone will come out and support us again this year. And with the RPV's uh, Deputy Director of Rec and Parks, Dan Trotner, get the community excited. You're going to have a grand opening here pretty soon at PVIC. What's going on? Right, so this is a project that's been in the works for a while now, since 2015. We're very excited. Um, we have two brand new exhibits, one on whaling and the history here in Portuguese Bend, and also uh, we were very lucky to be pre presented with the opportunity from the Coast Guard to accept their lens on a long-term loan. Uh, it's a third order lens from the lighthouse and we're going to be able to put it on display. So we applied for a grant and received some funding to uh, 
to put in two brand new exhibits. My name is uh, Chief Wright. I'm the officer in charge of AIDS Navigation Team, Los Angeles, Long Beach. Uh, our involvement with the Lighthouse Project is we get to assist Lampus Jim Woodward in the uh, disassembly and the transfer over to the Interpretive Center of the Lens. Also, the uh, restoration and putting the and reassembly of the lens. Uh, really cool project. I'm glad we get to be a part of it. My name is Jim Woodward, and I am a lampist. A lampist is someone who is experienced and proficient in the moving, disassembly, assembly, restoration of classical Fresnel lenses from lighthouses. How long have you been doing this work? 54 years. What made this project, the Point Vicente, special and unique for you? Mm, special and unique, uh, it's kind of special because this is the last French lens that the U.S. ever bought. Right now the operation is going on to assemble that lens. For you watching it, I mean, it's pretty exciting. It is really amazing to see um, something so large get broken down into pieces and then reassembled. Um, what's really exciting about this exhibit is we're going to have the opportunity to uh, display video of how the lens was actually re removed from the lighthouse and then reassembled here on site. That's fabulous. Always improving here. And you're going to have a ribbon cutting on Whale of a Day. Correct. We're going to have our grand reopening uh, at Whale of a Day this year. Uh, that is April 13th and we're going to start the ceremony at 11 a.m. And remember, Whale of a Day is Saturday, April the 13th, all day long. It's free, so make sure you come on out. And also, you need to park right here at City Hall. That's They'll right. shuttle you down because yeah. you can't park there. And come look for Marie and I and the RPV TV crew because we will be filming be there. roaming around. And there's going to be something extra new there, or new, and that is, besides the exhibits, and that is they're going to have a Sound Like a Whale contest. So Fantastic. What's a, can you do a whale sound? Uh, okay, so, uh, yeah, uh, <laughs> like a whoop, whoop, something like that. Sort of like, mm. try no, that's, let's let the, the pros do it. Okay, we'll just watch them doing it. Exactly. That's that should be, really be fun. fun. All right. Well, we still have more to come here on Studio RP. Right. Maria, spring is in the air, and it's time to enjoy all the beautiful habitat that's being protected by the Palos Verdes Peninsula Land Conservancy. So up next is the Conservancy's director. will join us here in studio. Stay with us. Yeah. Yeah. Visit aarp.org slash caregiving for information on how to provide even better care for the person who wants to care of you. Welcome back to Studio RPV. Joining us now here in studio is the director of the Palos Verdes Peninsula Land Conservancy, Adria Mohan. Thank you for joining us. It's great to have you here. Busy time. Spring is in the air. Your crews are busy out there dealing with keeping the land looking great. Yes. Uh, <laughs> we've had an, a tremendous amount of rainfall this year, which is a wonderful thing it's to different have. Different for us, right? Yes. Yeah. A wonderful problem. <laughs> yes. Yeah. But of course, that brings a little extra work for us in ensuring that invasive plants don't overrun the native plants that we're trying to cultivate on the sites. And uh, so that's keeping us busy, but we also have lots of wildflowers in bloom, which we're happy to talk about and encourage the community to come and take a look at as well. Tell us a little bit about your background. Yes, I've been with the Palos Verdes Peninsula Land Conservancy for nine years now. And uh, my background is in ecology and land management, um, and over that time with the Land Conservancy, I built some great relationships with our city partners and with our other organizations and volunteers. And so I just find it a tremendous honor that the board asked me to step in as executive director and to continue this good work to conserve open spaces on the peninsula. Right. The Land Conservancy was created 30 years ago. Yeah. Right? That's right. We just celebrated our 30th Congrats. anniversary. Yeah, so it's just amazing. give us like a kind of a quick quick timeline, a little bit about sort of how it's evolved, the mission today, and I'm sure it's pretty much the same just what you're doing out there to preserve open space. But talk a little bit about that. Yes, and the uh, the nexus for our organization uh, began around acquiring open spaces and ensuring that they were protected. And we really value our relationships with the city of Rancho Palos Verdes as being very forward-thinking city and very environmentally minded to work with the land trust like ourselves to make sure those lands were protected. Um, and now that we've acquired most of the open spaces and they're open for public use, our job now is to take care of them and ensure they're maintained. 
I have to ask, do you have like a favorite spot that you like to go to? Oh, that's you know it's a tough one. A really tough question. Um, one of my favorite places, and it's very popular, is Portuguese Bend Reserve. And that's mm -hmm. very common, that's I think, for folk to, to think about. Um, but lesser known, I love going to Alta Vicente Reserve, which is right by the Rancho Palos Verdes City Hall. And there you can see our restoration project. We've restored 22 acres of open space. Wow. And right now it's blooming. So it's a great time to come and see our work in progress. I know. I, went, I caught up with you when they were doing a restoration project. And they were putting up the new signs. When you go into the preserve now, it's beautiful, all these new, the new signage, mm -hmm. they're like art, right? Yes. And so it's really quite fabulous. Thank and, you. Um, talk about some of the exciting new projects that you might be working on the Conservancy right now. We're very excited to embark on a new project this spring. It'll be at Abalone Cove Reserve, mm -hmm. and that is our next large restoration project to benefit habitat. Oh. Uh, we're really looking for volunteer support on that project as we'll need help removing invasive plants and planting our native shrubs and monitoring it for the long term. So we'll be advertising those opportunities on our website. I was gonna, just going to ask you, how can people get involved? Absolutely. Our website is pvplc.org and there they can learn about all the opportunities to get involved. We're hosting something every weekend, right. um, including volunteer opportunities and nature walks and other programs. You really depend on volunteers, you also depend on donations, right? right? Absolutely. So how's that going? <laughs> the community is tremendously supportive of our work and we, we really thank everybody for, for the help in doing what the, the large tasks that we've set out to do. What's sort of the biggest challenges that, can, that you see, as, if there are any? <laughs> sure, I mean, the, the, the environment is definitely a challenge as we have periods of drought followed by periods of rain. Right. That changes our workload, but we're readily adaptable to that. Um, as well as the community coming out to enjoy those lands. We really uh, foster uh, an appreciation for open spaces mm -hmm. and making folks aware of these lands, um, but then also ensuring that they're not loved to death too. So providing those signs <laughs> right. is a great education. And also point. minding those signs. I know yeah. right now because of the rain, yeah. so it says no, you know, yeah, close. don't go. <laughs> I see people coming out, right? Yeah. So can people get fined for that? Yes, or cited? Yes, yes, the Sheriff's Department um, works with the city to patrol those open spaces and right. the preserves while they're closed. But it's a worthy effort as those trails are very muddy and For sure. yeah. tremendous damage can be done. So and, pay attention to this. And when focusing on this preserve that we have, but the Land Conservancy manages a lot more than that, just besides the preserve, you have um, White Point. So if you want to, in our last minute, just share just sort of yes. what, you're, what you're dealing with right now a lot. Sure. A lot of responsibilities. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and the peninsula wide, that we have many open spaces that we manage beyond Rancho Palos Verdes, which includes White Point Nature Preserve in San Pedro. Um, we manage the nature center there, as well as George F. Canyon Nature Center in the facility of Rolling Hills Estates. Mm -hmm. So we're very active in ensuring that we provide education opportunities, field trips for students, and uh, nature interpretation opportunities, as well as volunteers. So we're looking for folks to come and help us on our Earth Day, April 20th at White Point. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, that's well, great. So come there. on down there. Yeah, absolutely. Well, it's great having you here. Thanks yes, for all the thank work you you're for doing coming in the down. community to help thank preserve you. all the open space and keep it keep it blooming out there. It's beautiful. All right. Thank it you. really you is. Know, thank, thank you. you. All right, what's happening next, Maria? Coming up. Coming up next, Liz, we got something else. It's craft, it's craft <laughs> month. She's crafty. National Craft Month. She's going to do a craft for me right here in studio, so stay tuned for that. And, and we're David Benoit. David Benoit, jazz man David Benoit. So great. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. We are back, and in case you didn't know, March is National Crafts Month. It's also another national holiday. It's Liz's birthday month. <gasps> So in honor of her birthday month, we're going to show you a fun birthday party favorite. Anniversaries are great, but in honor you're, of your so birthday. You're tricky mentioning my birthday. That's on right. March 19th. And, and Liz <laughs> is also a big sports fan. So from the Super Bowl, we brought her back some <gasps> Super Bowl cups for her little birthday. And uh, we're Thank just going to see how that all works out. Because I'm from Boston and my Patriots won. They did. The, yes. Yeah. The but moving on to the next year. Yes. Uh, and moving on to the craft. Moving on to the craft. Yes. 
We're gonna show you a really fun Thank craft you. to make. You're so welcome. All right, now, it starts off with chocolate, which any good favor starts out with chocolate as far as I'm concerned. And you're gonna put labels on the little chocolate bars. So you're gonna need to buy the little Hershey nuggets or something kind of the same shape. And the labels, of course, are personalizing. So that they you are. can, like if it's like my birthday, you'd have right. a picture of me on there. So we have a picture of Liz, <laughs> Carlos, oh, and I from a Christmas shoot that we did. So we're gonna make the little labels to go on How for your, fun. in honor of your birthday. So we're gonna Thank show you how to do that. So you're gonna want the Avery address labels and they can come in, in kind of different right. sizes, but the package. yeah, let's let's start with that. We'll start with that one. And then you're gonna print these out on your printer. You'll find the picture. And what I like to do is print three across because as you'll see, it fits right over the chocolate. All right. Okay. And so these just wrap around. Yep, they just wrap and right around. The, you can use any kind of chocolate, but the particular, these labels fit best around. On this, the, they really do. The, um, yeah. The um, nuggets, the chocolate. That's it. Hershey and see, nuggets. That, then it's just kind of just fits on there. There like we that. are. There we are. You, Carlos, and I. That's it. And so what we can do is then you're going to take these, you can put them in a little baggie or. Right. There's another cool way to do it, and that's in a little jar if you want to do bigger favors. Okay. Okay, now Liz, you're gonna help me with the little jar, okay, okay. to make it more personalized. You're gonna cut this out. Here's our pattern. Okay. It's just a round circle. Okay, very nice. Okay. So we're gonna cover we're gonna, it in yep. the mason jar. Yes, and then we're gonna kind of decorate the jar a little bit, and then you just put the candies in the jar. Don't you, can you love do, doing crafts? I do. I, it's so much fun, and I think it's therapeutic as well. It's definitely you know? a good way to decompress. I yes. do needlepoint and knitting. How about you? And I do crocheting and mm -hmm. Little painting here and there, but I like yeah. to do a lot of fun things like like this. So I've got I've got my circle. Thanks okay. for making me a template. But I'm I did. I made you a template because it has the Boston Red Sox Jesus also so thoughtful on here, as you can see. Now watch this. So we're gonna take the mason jar. Okay. And we're gonna cover this. Very nice. And put the candy in, which yep. is all decorated. Candy's in there. We'll turn this around. I'm just gonna pop this in. As you can see, it says Red Sox on it. This is the best birthday. See, and then you can just <laughs> kind of keep this in your. Look how fun that is. Yeah, and it's just like a little fun little jar. And so, like when you're, you're doing just... a party, like you can make these up as party favors. Right. These are super inexpensive. You can get right. them, you know, anywhere. The Mason jars. Dollar Tree. And the candy. And you know what? Because I think if you ever look online, to, you can have these personalized and do them online. You can do them through Hershey's, but they cost like ten times to... as much. And it's more fun to do yourself because you can do multiple pictures you yes. know like you, usually we would do maybe three or four different Thank ones you. so there's Liz's little and, birthday and gift I love it they could be you know wedding favors That's and then it. like you were saying you could also put them in a baggie too let's show one so, can just dump these out you know those big bags you get quite a few you get you a lot can make like a dozen party favors yeah but if we have more here we will eat them so I decided yes. that we would limit them here we put these Wait, in. don't we want to leave one out to have a sweet oh don't <laughs> worry we will be having them very fun and then you want to just wrap that around and you can do a little bag so really a fun thing to do nice and easy and everybody loves so them. These are. You just put them on a table so for a party go. favor. So fun. Thank you for organizing this. All right, Liz. Thanks so happy for birthday, birthday month. Happy birthday. That's you right. Know, turning 20. That's right. Well, 21. <laughs> 21. We should go to yeah, Las I gotta Vegas. Be legal. I Thank you. And thanks for this. <laughs> now, in addition to sweet chocolate, there's sweet music, right? Yeah, we got some sweet music now coming That's it. up. Jazz man from the peninsula, famous musician, David Benoit. That's right. He's just unbelievable, legendary. He was invited to be um, the guest speaker at the Leanne and Friends Lecture Series. I That's heard it was standing room only. Second, it was second Friday Amazing. of every month at, Pen at the Peninsula Center Library's community room. Right, and you're right. I mean, actually, beyond being standing room, it's you have to remember these, this lecture is super popular. It's first come, first serve. It's free. So yeah, quite a few people actually couldn't get in. Yeah, and of course, when you have so David Benoit, <laughs> yeah, who's incredible. I mean, he he talked a lot about his childhood growing up and how he became a musician. He shared all that. So let's check in with David to find out what he's up to and hear a sweet tune with David Benoit. Pretty glad everyone came. Maybe they got heard a little story they had, they didn't know before about me, and so, and especially being a longtime PV resident, uh, very proud to be part of this community. I'm gonna start a new album. It's probably, I, I, and I don't even. I've actually lost track of how many records I've done in the 30s somewhere, but uh, working on that, uh, started rehearsals with my youth orchestra, the Asian American Youth Symphony, and we'll be getting ready for our spring concert. People enjoyed you today, but they can enjoy you daily on a radio show. We'll talk about that. Yeah, I've been at KJAZZ now for seven years. I'm the morning uh, host, uh, although they're not, not there this morning. Sometimes I have to cheat once in a while and pre-record it, but yeah, I've been there for seven years, and then I also have a show on Saturdays called Jazz in the 88s. Blues. 
Wow, I could listen to David Benoit all day, and of course we can listen to him right on the radio. That's right, and right here on RPV TV, the entire lecture, so just tune in, he's That's great. That's right, his lecture is appearing on our show called Lectures with Leanne, That's right. and it's daily here, so check it out, and get to those lectures oh, too, they're great incredible. Job. Second Friday of every month at the Peninsula Center Community Room at 10 o'clock. Leanne's doing a great job, that's for she sure. She is. And you did a great job of making me a little birthday I get. I did, so right? I'm You're the best. <laughs> all right, Liz. Well, we're going to celebrate by eating some chocolate. So thank you all very much for watching. So as we wrap it up, we're going to unwrap. That's it. Let's do it. I'm Maria Soraya. <laughs> Liz Brown Swanson. We'll Thanks see you for next time. Us.